keep California cowgirls from vanishing. Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Sadie practices over the haunches with an ATV mechanical cow simulator. Pulling slack. And Susie's coming my way because she feels the pressure behind her horns. We harness young Morgan Mare Sadie and work on desensitizing her to the training harness pole. We're going to take very, very tiny baby steps with her. Look to see that we have fully harnessed her, except for the tug straps. It's kind of hard to keep these tug straps up on her back when she's moving around. But I'm showing you them. They're around my neck for now. I'm showing you that we're extending them with some stud chains so that they reach all the way back from her shoulders uh, to the back of this training harness pole. We'll show you that another day. Now here is some of the hardware, which I've shown on other shows, but I want to make sure it's also in this show. I use clasps. These are double-ended clasps of various sizes, small, medium, large. I use very, very many quick releases. This is a quick release that's open. It is connected to a bolt eye, and to close it, I pull down the sleeve and then let the sleeve go back up and then we have a loop. Mm -hmm. oh. Now look how many quick releases I have. One, two, three, four. One on each bolt eye. And then, similar to the way we managed Eve yesterday and got her somewhat accustomed to the single tree, we have quick releases on the single tree. Each horse will have his own single tree when it comes to actually continuing the training and pulling. Quick release. Quick release. On the back side of the single tree so that we can very gently put it down to the ground when we're pretty sure that we have control over our horse uh, is another two quick releases. One here. One here. And this chain allows us to hold it up when we don't want the sound of it sliding on the ground and very gently put it down and pick up if necessary if the horse spooks by the sound. Now we don't expect either Eve or Sadie to spook by the sound. So probably in our next session we will hook up this single tree to the back of this training harness pole We'll be hooking the training harness pole to Sadie in the front at her shoulders. And we will put the single tree down on the ground, making sure that the training harness pole, the back of it, is high enough so that if either Eve or Sadie lifts their legs, they're not going to get a leg over any part of the training harness pole or of the harness, including the tug straps. These are all very important aspects of harnessing to pull. Now ultimately, and it probably will be several sessions from now, we will also connect this ABS training pole that I, uh, that I uh, want my horses to pull. It is long, it is big, visually present, but it's lightweight, so it's easy for us to move it around when we want to put it in one place or the other. Again, quick releases, as a matter of fact, two on these bolt eyes. And again, in the back, a chain, which will allow us to pick up 
this pole if for any reason we don't want it making noise on the ground. This is the rig that we're going to use to train both Sadie and Eve to be farming, pulling horses. Uh, and we're going to do this in very, very small steps. See how Katie is still walking Sadie around because Sadie is not quite as accustomed to all the straps. But now Katie's going to come over. She can hear me so she knows I want her to come over. And she has a mic on if there's anything she wants to say about the body language of Sadie as she approaches this training harness pole. We also want both Eve and Sadie to get used to knowing where their feet are. So as she steps over some of these parts Easy. of the training harness pole, we want... Come on. Step up. There. Girl, girl. There. It's almost like doing a jump or a crossbar. Oh. Step Good over. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, so... Okay. We only have one horse today, so we're only going to pick up the training harness pole in the front and the back and hook up if we feel that we have the proper demeanor, attitude from Sadie. Can you pick up? Don't hook up, though. As a matter of fact, just to do a few steps forward, because you know there's chains and clasps It's going to cl uh, clank. See how high I have the back of this... Pull oh, girl. because uh -huh. uh, 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 she felt it. I know. She felt it. I know. If she if she moves away like that when she's in a pair, that could be a problem. So we're gonna have to work on desensitizing her to the feeling of this pole. It's okay. Let's go back and very quietly. It's all right, Sadie. It's all right. It's all right. Easy. Oh, okay. Easy. Okay. That's all right. Just a second or two. She did jerk a little bit. Did you see that, Katie? Yeah. And how does she feel in your hand? And how do her eyes look? She's got her blinders on, but we can see. She's not completely calm, but she's not okay. stressing Okay. Now, a calm else. horse will blink a lot with her eyes. <laughs> is she blinking? No. No. You see, because a, a, a stressed horse is designed by nature to keep those eyes wide open. Okay, so we're not going to hook up. Because she pull, pulled her hips away, we're not going to hook up today. We're just going to do this baby step desensitization. Easy, Better? Easy. Okay. We're not going to uh, allow her to move away. That will be the wrong answer. You don't want to remove the pressure when you get the wrong answer. All right. Let's not even touch. Let's just get close. Good. Good. She's thinking about moving away. I can see it in her legs. Let's touch again. It's all right. A real concern. Easy, okay. Easy. Okay. We're going to keep the pressure until we get the right answer. And then, you know what? We're going to look for our note of resolution. We don't want to do too much, especially with my youngster, Sadie. It's all right. Now, see how she's trying to get away from it. This is almost like obstacles training. And I've done a whole lot of that with all of my horses. Right now, this is an obstacle to Sadie. It's not a tool for farming. Not yet. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. Okay. It's all right, Sadie. Good girl. Good girl. Easy. You can probably hear Easy. Katie talking to her. It's okay. It's all right. Okay. It's all right. I know. I know. Okay, let's just uh, another couple steps in another half a minute or so. Small baby steps. Easy. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Pick it up higher a little bit. Okay. Easy. It's all right. It's all right. Ah, a little bit of a jerk away. Still concerned. It's okay. But she didn't move, so we moved the pole away. Easy. Whoa. Cool. It's all right. Good girl. It's all right. Good girl. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. There you go. I touched her back leg. Oh. Would you say that was better from yeah. your point of view too? Yeah. 
Okay, let's uh, put it down. When it's planking, notice one more thing before we turn off the camera, that we made extra holes in these tug strap holders so that if she picks up her leg, she's less likely to get her leg on the other side of the tug strap. So we have to have everything high enough so that if we have a youngster like this who does what a horse would naturally do if they were concerned about an obstacle, about a predator, um, so that if she does it, she doesn't get hung up in anything. Uh, but if she does get hung up, well, quick releases and enough helpers on hand and uh, a, a small enough area that she can't get hurt and they can't get hurt and she learns that this particular farming training tool will not hurt her either. We will be working with Eve until we're confident she is solid on pulling. Then we'll bring Sadie to learn to pull with her mother next to her, showing no fear. Our training harness pole, the single tree and the log, ready to go here on the driveway. Unfortunately, we only have two people here today. And so um, we just want to do some repetition. We want to get Eve really sound, really trustworthy, as trustworthy as any horse can be, um, on uh, feeling and uh, carrying the training harness pole uh, with the uh, tug straps connected to the back of the training harness pole. And then we don't know if we're going to try this today since it's just Katie and I, but uh, the very next step after we have successfully repeated what we've done in the past with Eve, the very next step is to let the, uh, the single tree uh, be connected to the training harness pole and let it um, uh, slide on the ground behind Eve. She has blinders on, she'll hear it, she won't know exactly what it is. We may not be ready uh, today to connect it to the, to the uh, training harness pole, but you know, another way to get her desensitized to it is to just uh, walk her along without the training harness pole and drag along the single tree behind her. So we see what kind of reaction she gives us to that, uh, to that sound. So maybe that's what we'll do. But um, to expedite camera work today, since, uh, since there's only the two of us to handle the horse and do the camera, I'm gonna turn off the camera now. I'm gonna reposition it and turn it on uh, so that you can see what happens, how it happens at the other end where we make a hot turn and how important it is for the person in the back holding up the training harness pole for now. Um, has to move really fast to, uh, to stay behind the horse when we're going uh, in the haw direction, haw being left. So I'm turning off the camera now and then I'll turn it back on when we're ready to start walking there. It'll, it'll be a moment before you see us in the camera. Okay, we have the tug straps connected. Eve so far is being good. It's a very warm, quiet day. So uh, the next thing is for Katie to pick up the front of the harness pole I pick up the back. We keep everything up at least 32 inches off the ground. And then uh, I'm going to show you how it goes at the other end by just leaving the camera on, but you won't hear any sound.
pick up those tug straps. Okay, now we quick released the tug straps off of the horse. She was fine. A little bit, a little bit concerned. So that's all we're going to do today as far as moving with the harness pole. It did touch her a lot and she was okay on it. While Sadie needs some more desensitization. And what we're going to do is, as I said, wait, wait, the tug strap drop. See, that's what concerns me. We need to have a better way of connecting that tug strap. Let me, you got it? We need to have a better way, if we're going to store it on the back, of keeping it on her back. As Eve was fine on it, Sadie may have gotten concerned about it. Okay, so I feel like we have confirmed that Eve is all right on the training harness pole. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do, and we're going to do it right over here. Oh. I'm going to leave the camera on. Oh. Katie's going to walk Eve in that direction. You see Eve is a little bit antsy. Uh, and uh, as Eve walks by me, I'm going to be holding onto the single tree and I'm going to drag it along with her. First having her follow the single tree, then having the single tree following her. Again, you won't hear any sound uh, because we don't have the mics on, but you will. Uh, be able to see, and if there's any impo anything important to say, we'll tell you what it is. Okay, we're ready to desensitize Eve to the single tree. It's on my shoulder right now with a chain, but we've decided to take the tug straps off and see how high now we have the tug strap holders. We definitely do not want to take a chance that Eve or Sadie will lift their back legs and get them caught either in that strap or on the tug strap or on the training harness pole. So everything has to be high enough in case they lift their leg. All right, now right here in camera's view, you'll be seeing me approach Eve with the single tree. First approach her. Then I'm gonna ask her to trust me enough to let me go behind her. And uh, I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit so that we can use more of the driveway. Even a little farther back, the more we're able to challenge Eve, the better as far as gaining confidence. We need to gain confidence that she's pretty solid on this activity because she's going to give confidence to her daughter, Sadie. We hope. This is something that Pirelli has done in, uh, recently on RFD TV. He has taken a whole herd of young horses that have never had a saddle on, put them in a large training arena, put the saddles on them all, let them buck away in front of each other. And then the bravest one stops bucking and then another one stops bucking and then before you know it, they're all walking around calmly because they learn from each other. So we're gonna try to use that principle here when teaching youngster Sadie, Eve's daughter, that the harness, the harness pole, the straps, the chains, the sounds, the, the feeling of pull is nothing to worry about. And now here I go with my single tree with the extra chain just so I can be pulling it. It's all righty. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. She's kind of trying to watch, right? Yeah. Let me get close to the camera and say that. Notice how Eve was trying to watch this thing as she was, as it was going by her. Remember that she has her blinders on. Well, we want her to watch it. We want her to investigate until she doesn't feel she needs to investigate anymore. So now I'm going to go uh, from her right to her left. Last time I went from her left to her right. Less curious, right? Yeah. Alrighty. Notice
notice how she seemed a lot less curious, didn't feel it necessary to follow the sound. Now this is the most challenging of all. I'm going to go behind her as Katie walks, uh, you know, maybe 10 steps this direction and then uh, hauser. Uh, that means turn to the left and go back 10. And I'm going to try to follow you with this sound behind her. She seemed a little bit concerned. We think it's just going in the westerly direction, which is the direction we were going. So as our next challenge, and that'll be the last challenge for today, we really want to stop on a good note of resolution. I'm going to hook this single tree to the training log and it's going to make more noise and see how she feels about the very same exercises with the single tree hooked to the chaining log. And until I have it hooked, I'll be turning the camera off. Now I will be pulling the single tree and the log uh, on Eve's left side. I'll walk all the way around her. It's making a lot different sounds than the single tree alone. We'll see what her reaction is and I'll go both directions. Everything needs to be done both directions. And then the final challenge will be to pull it behind her as Katie walks oh, five to 10 steps forward. Uh, ha or G her, G being right, Ha being left and back. Here we go. We only had to stop Eve once to ask for her focus. She was okay on it. Uh, this needs repetition. This log on the gravel of the driveway, the sand covered driveway, makes a whole lot more noise than it does on the grass, the turf. So I tried to do a lot of pulling of the log on the driveway. Because who knows where we'll be farming. Chances are on 
turf or on earth, dirt, but we may have to ask the horses to go someplace. That means that uh, the tool will make a little bit more noise or a little bit different noise. And what we really need to be sure of, as sure as anybody can be, when working with a, uh, the nature of the horse, is that uh, we have the horse's trust and respect. And so that's why we're working with Eve, or we're going to keep doing it, keep showing you how we gain that trust and respect in small baby steps, and then ask her to teach it to her daughter, Sadie. And that's all for today. As a postscript, we're showing you what we're doing as we're taking Eve to her tie post to remove her harness. We're asking her to walk between the pole, the training harness pole, and the log that we're using for training. She seems to be particularly stressed going in the westerly direction, which is where she's faced now. And you know what? In the easterly direction, there's a creek bank. Uh, and she knows that there are a lot of critters, potential predators back there. So you can't be sure. You don't know what's going on in their minds. But we think that that, that direction, in the westerly direction, which puts her back to the easterly creek bank direction, is the one that her nature, as the flea animal, is saying, I think I better be careful because who knows what is going to come out and attack me. So we have to constantly think in terms of what are they thinking, especially when they've got blinders on so they don't have that peripheral vision, which is also a mechanism that nature has given them to protect themselves. They can see quite well on their periphery, but not when blinders are on. So they have to trust us. They have to trust their hearing. And they have to have a lot of repetition so that they're not afraid of what's happening now and what's happening next. More harness training pull work with Eve and Sadie will be shown in part two. We will continue to add parts as necessary to accomplish the objective of having the pair pull together using the training harness pull. Our cast of characters, Sadie and Eve. Sammy, Rusty, and Susie. Heifer calf, Sela. For more information, www.cowgirlchannel.com.